Okay, so we're going to get started on exercise 222. Um, and I, uh, I apologize for last class, but hopefully you guys got something out of it because you got an all day to model. Um, but today we're going to start back up in the world of lighting. The website works, which is great. Uh, <laughs> yay. And uh, we're going to start kind of doing lighting in a vacuum because if we, if we started doing lighting on your actual building, it would be too much at once. And so we need to concentrate on really understanding how lighting works in V-Ray because it's a little bit more complicated than just dropping a light and having it work. Um, and there's a bunch of quirks that are going to start happening relating to lighting. So the, the first thing is that we have to actually make what I would call the fixtures or the things that hold the light, the geometry that holds the light. And then we'll deal with bringing that light in as a block and then adding the V-ray component of the light. So when we look at a, a light bulb or a light fixture or, or whatever, and we can use um, in this room the example of the lights that are above your heads, the fluorescent lights, we have a couple things that are happening. If we look at the fixture, we see some kind of a glow. And in the case of these fluorescents, we see kind of a rectangular glow with a couple bright bars as part of it. The bright bars would be the light bulbs themselves. In this case, they're fluorescent. Uh, and then we have some kind of a diffuse light screen that's over it uh, in terms of geometry. That is if we're looking at the light. But we also have the light that that is casting on the ground and you and me and everybody else in the room. And so those two things in V-Ray, in the world of V-Ray, are separate. And so we have to model what the light looks like if we're looking at it separate and apart from the, the light that does the casting and whatever. So I'm going to start with a very, very simple geometric light, and then I'll add complexity, and I'll do some other types of lights um, so that you can see them um, as, I, as I kind of work through it. Or one of is off because it's broken. OK. Like them, Fair enough. Yeah. I think it should come in with the file that you download anyway. So let's go ahead and, and start with a very basic light. I'm going to do a can light. I'll do like a 4-inch can light, um, which will have a little bit of trim to it. But if we were looking at a can light, you guys all know what a can light is? I'm guessing a recessed can light. You, know, you probably have one in your kitchen or your hallway or something like that at home. They're very, very common. There aren't any here. right? Um, we're going to model that from kind of the understide. I'm going to start with it at, this is just a new Rhino file. Uh, large object inches, and I'm going to model it from, because obviously it's going to go on the ceiling, I'm going to look at it from underneath uh, as I start to model it. So let's start with um, a circle. I'll start at 0, 0, and I'll do a diameter, so D of 4 inches. And then I'll go ahead and I'll offset this by the trim. We'll say that that's maybe a half inch, something like that. And then I can actually uh, extrude this into the little bit of trim. So let's take these two. We'll extrude curve, negative, I don't know, 0.125 for an eighth of an inch. Oops. Hold on a second. I didn't make it solid. Extrude curve, solid yes, negative 0.125. There it is for negative eighth. And if we were to sh see it shaded, right there's that little piece. Notice that everything I'm doing is going down from 0, 0, right? Because I'm going to glue it on the ceiling. Okay, So I have that. And now I need a little bit of like a, a globe to it, uh, something that I'm going to see that would represent the light bulb. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll use the ellipsoid, which is underneath the box. If I come over here, uh, we don't want a sphere. Here it is, the ellipsoid. Okay, It's going to ask me for the center first. So that's at 0, 0. And first radius. Let me turn on quadrant snap. Oh, come on. Well, it doesn't really matter. We'll just do it there. Second radius would be there. And the third radius, I'm going to drop it down to be at the bottom. So if we're looking at it, see how I have a little bit of a glass dome there? Make sense? Okay. I don't need the top half of this. So I'm going to split this with the curve that goes around. No. Split with that curve such that I can get rid of the top half. Why did it split so funky? Hold on, let's try that one more time. Always doesn't want to work when you're doing it live, right? All right, so let's try this one more time. Let me split this object with this. There we go. 
Now I can get rid of the top half. So I only I could technically leave it, but it, it doesn't do anything for me. Okay. So essentially, if I were looking at this on the underside, right, that now looks like a little can light. Okay. If I wanted to get a little bit fancy, I could you know fill at the edge instead of being sharp, or you know I can get a little bit fancier. But for the sake of what you're seeing, uh, this is all that we really need. Okay. So next thing I need to do is I need to add some materials and I need to organize my layers. Remember, I'm going to use this as a block. So in this particular instance, I would have something, and we'll call this maybe um, for can light, something like that. And then we'll have something for a trim and something for maybe a uh, light bulb or bulb. And so let me nest these underneath. So I have bulb and I have trim underneath the four can light. I'll get rid of the other layers so that I just have a nice clean stack. And we'll move this object onto the trim layer. And we'll move the um, bulb onto the bulb layer. Change object layer. OK, so I have those two established. Next piece is the materials. So I'm going to right click in see materials. We'll load a material. I need something for the trim. Um, for the sake of argument, maybe I'll use that white porcelain. So look for V-Ray materials, porcelain, and we'll do white. So it's a little shiny. So be it. And let me apply that to my bulb layer, or excuse me, to my trim layer. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I have a material that's been applied. And if we switch to rendered mode, We'd see that I have a whitish, shiny material on, on the trim. Uh, but I have nothing for the bulb yet. And so the way V-Ray recognizes a bulb, and again, this is when you're actually looking at the light. So in your rendering, if you want to see what the light bulb looks like, we're going to create a special material called an emissive material. And what, that em what an emissive material does is it makes the surface glow, so to speak. And so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my V-Ray material editor. And I'll open this up. And I'm going to right click on Scene Materials. And instead of loading the material, I'm going to create a material from scratch. Okay? And I'm going to come down here. And it's going to be a standard material. And I'm going to call this material bulb or light bulb or something like that. Okay? And I'll go ahead and say OK. And it's called bulb. And so I, have to, I even have to reference this. So on your little handout, I have, I have what these numbers are. Um, because I don't know them off the top of my head. OK, so we're going to hold on a second. I have to double check where this is. Uh, oh, I didn't put it on here. We have to view V-Ray 8.15. So let me jump over here. I just I, I can't remember off the top of my head these numbers, but these are the numbers that are going to matter. Okay, so let's look at diffuse color. It's going to be 155, 155, 155. So I'm going to come back here, and under diffuse color, what's gray right now, I'm going to type in for R, G, and B 155, 155, and 155. Okay, so it's kind of a lightish gray. Then under transparency, and again I'm referencing 0, 0, and 0 which is probably what it already is, but we'll double check. 0, 0, and 0. OK. So those two are set right. But now there's another piece of it, and that is that I need to add an emissive layer. So we've already added like a reflective layer to a material. It's the same thing, except it's emissive. So I'm going to right click on Bulb, and I'm going to go to Create Layer, Top Choices Emissive. Okay, So I'll go ahead and click on Emissive, and we get an emissive drawer. So now I'm going to deal with the color and the transparency of the emissive layer. So once again, I'll jump back to 8.15. The emissive color is 200, 161, and 82. So I'm going to click on color, and we're going to go 200, 161, and 82. And I'll go ahead and say OK. It's kind of an ugly yellow, okay? but that's OK. Under transparency, It's going to be 100, 100, 100. Why did you try to zero? Uh, it's, it's a lot of online searching. <laughs> so this is designed to mimic incandescent light, so warm, warm light, right? Soft white, warm light. 
OK, so I have those settings all set. And notice when I click on Preview, right? doesn't do much. At the very bottom here, there's a little bit of, of yellow that's reflecting. It's kind of ugly. Okay. However, if we come over to my emissive, notice at the bottom there's something called intensity. Okay. If I drop this from, say, 1 to 10 and then click Preview, you can see that this gets brighter and the, the, it's kind of shining on the sides a little bit. We're going to take this all the way up to 100. Okay. And it's going to be almost almost white in its color, but that'll end up working nicely later on. Okay? So I have that. Even though it's yellow in color, it ends up very white because it's a much more intense. And so at this point, I'm going to take the bulb layer, and I'm going to apply it to my, of course, right? It's there. It's just not going to let me get to it. Oh, come on. OK, well, I'm going to save this. <laughs> the good news is it happens to me too, right? All right, so this today is 222. So let me go new folder, 222. Oops, apparently I already had 222. And let's call this 4 canlight. And I'll go ahead and click Save. And then we will close Rhino. There it is, right? And let's open Rhino back up. In the meantime, um, if you go to exercise 222, we want this sample night <coughs> environment to try out your light blocks. Okay, So you'll right click on that and say save link as and save that um, sample night scene.3dm file. Come on, Rhino. The, um, the actual Vizop file won't download, but the set of the sample night. The Scene will. Yeah, I'll thing. fix it. Yeah. It does. You shouldn't need it. It should already be set up for you. It just pops up script. I'll look at it. OK, so let me go ahead and open that back up. All right, so once again, I'll go back to materials. I'll go to bulb, and I'm going to say apply material to layer, and we'll put it on the bulb layer. OK, so after that's done, I'll go ahead and I'll save this. OK, and remember, I have it very organized. The four can light, the trim, and the bulb. The materials are applied correctly. Now I'll open up that file that I just downloaded which is the sample night scene. So let me go ahead and go to open. And they, they're like bowling on the roof today or something. I mean, it's been all day. They're bowling up there. So let me go ahead and open that sample night scene. <laughs> kind of entertaining. OK, so this is, this is my sample night scene. And it's set up for you so that you don't have to worry too much about the environment. We'll get to the environment next class. But I want you guys to be able to drop in that block that we just created. So let me go ahead and go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. It's like, come on, guys. OK, and so I'm going to browse for my 4 can light. Now I'll go ahead and say open, and I'll say OK. And this time I'm going to link it, right? And it's going to be a reference. And I'll go ahead and say OK. I want to replace my ma materials. Apply to all. Sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> it's just hard to see what you're doing because it'll be like, <laughs> Yeah. And I'll drop it into this scene. Now, again, this, this object is, is designed to go up on the roof so, uh, or on the ceiling. So I have to put it in somewhere on the ceiling. Okay. It would be nice probably if it was in the center. So let me go ahead and draw a line across as reference. And I can take that and I can move it. So that it's in the center like that. So if I were to take this and I were to do a quick rendering of this, right? if we were looking up at the light, 
we would see the glow, which is the idea. And I know it's dark on the screen, but you can see a little bit more detail for me. Right. So I'm seeing this little glow, which is the important part of that. However, if I jump back a little bit, and I, and I did a rendering of this whole kind of scene, right? all we would see is the light itself. There's nothing being cast on that wall. There's nothing more than the glow of the light bulb. And so the lighting in a scene is never meant to be coming from an emissive material. That's not what's going to do your lighting in your scene. Okay, So notice that the emissive material and the geometry of the light is the block. That comes in. Now in the actual scene where I'll do the rendering is where I'll insert the V-Ray light. And so what I'm going to do to mimic this kind of a light is I'm going to use a, a V-Ray light called a spotlight. And so we've already used the sun before. We've used a directional light before. But we're going to use something called a spotlight this time. And so I'll go ahead and click on the Create Spotlight. And it's going to say, what is the base of my cone? So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to set the base of my cone right at the center of my object. And I'm going to say that my diameter is 2 feet. And I want my height to be 1 foot. Now it's really hard in the perspective view to get it to, to be a 1 foot tall cone. So I'm going to switch into one of my side views, and I'll type 1 foot like that, and I'll get this little cone. Okay, That represents the spotlight, or the V-Ray light that's going to do the, the lighting itself. Now there's a couple quirks about V-Ray lighting, no surprise. And that is that this light, the source of it, the point of this light, cannot be inside of any object. Okay, So I have to make sure that it's outside. So I'm going to use Move, and I'm going to move this straight down so that it is just below my object. Something like this. It doesn't have to be really close. It just has to be semi-close. Okay. So if we were to look at it in this view, my cone here is below the block instance. Okay. And they're not intersecting each other. Okay. So now that I have that in place, I have to edit the properties of this light. So I'll select the light, and I'll come over here into my properties window and click on the light button. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to adjust a few things. The first thing is my color. So I'll click on this. And the color values that we want to use are 255, 214, and 170, okay? which is a kind of a light pale yellow. Okay? Again, we're mimicking incandescent light. So I'll go ahead and say OK for that. Now, under units, the only one that really makes sense to people is the radiant power, or the capital W, which is watts. And the reason that this makes sense to people is we're used to putting in like a 100 watt light bulb or a 60 watt light bulb. So we have some clue as to what the wattage of this light should be. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and use radiant power. And I don't know, we'll set it to 60. Okay, Now, down here a little bit further, under options, under decay, I want it to be inverse square, which is what light actually is. Okay. We'll leave the penumbra fall off at linear, and the rest of these options should be default. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I have to warn you, sometimes you get a burned out bulb where they just don't light. Okay. It sounds stupid, it sounds silly, right? but it happens. Okay. And you'll be working along, and you can even take one that's working, and you can copy and paste it, and use that light over and over again, and one of them will be out. I don't know why it happens. It's just a V-Ray thing. So if, if you're doing this and you don't get a light, you might just have to recreate the light. It's weird, but it's the truth. Okay? So now that I have that, however, right, I can bring up my render view, and I can go ahead and do a rendering. Okay? And so this time, I will have the little emissive light, but you can also see that I have a light that's being cast on the wall. Okay? And it's giving me a nice little, little view here. If I don't like my, I have two things that I can change now. If I don't like my exposure, remember I can come back into my options and go to my camera, and I could change, say, to 100. <laughs> and my overall scene will be brighter. <laughs> okay. So, so what I'm getting is I'm getting a light that's being cast. I have this nice little arc that's on the wall. And if you go home and you turn on your lights, say in your hallway, and it's a can light, and you pay attention now, you'll see these little arcs that show up on the wall. Okay? 
But I also have a little bit more control. So what I recommended doing was this spotlight that had basically a ratio of 2 to 1. So the diameter is 2 and the height was 1. If instead I change this, and let's create a new light, right? and let's do it, you know, it's basically same principles here. We'll start, start here in the center. Right? This time maybe we'll do uh, a diameter of oops, 4 feet and a height of one foot. Going up that way. Again, remember I have to move this down so that it's below my object. Let's get rid of that first light. It's about the ratio. It's not about the size. So this ratio would be 4 to 1 instead of 2 to 1. Right. The cone, and you can see the cone here is much more open. So what? let me go back through and adjust my settings again. So 255, 214, 170, 60 watts, there, inverse square, and we'll render this again. And so that was what it was before. And look at how much higher this is on the wall. So it's a much more diffuse light, right? And it's much higher on the wall. So I've changed where it's falling on the wall based on its spotlight. If I did the opposite, and I said that, right, it came in here, uh, diameter one foot, and my height was maybe two feet. I'm exaggerating. Right, so we have the opposite relationship. Oops. Move to right there. Let's get rid of this one. And 255, 214, oops, 170, inverse square, watts, 60. We render again. Instead of this falling right on the wall, it's coming straight down and making a spotlight on the floor. Okay. So depending on how diffuse it is, we're, we've, we've essentially we've sharpened up that, and now it's much more of a spotlight or a flashlight, or e you get this, get the idea. So depending on the type of light, you're going to adjust the V-ray light to mimic it. Okay. So anytime that we're doing something with you know, say a can light or a recess light or something, if it's one directional, it's going to tend to be a spotlight. Okay? But the spotlight is always going to create circles or arcs of light. Okay? If we want it to be more of a rectangular light, there'll be a different kind of light that we'll use. So let me come back, and in this particular scene, let's go back to that simple 2 to 1 ratio. So I'll go back to spotlight there, diameter 2 feet, height of 1 foot. Move. And this is in watts, 60 inverse square. OK, so we've got that. Now, I could take these, and I could copy these, right? so that maybe I have there. I have there. I could take these and I could move them all closer to the wall, something like that. And so the lights will copy, and again, unless you get a bad one. And when we do our next render, they got closer to the wall, and now I'm getting those arcs along the wall. Make sense? Okay. So what about if we want different kind of light? So again, this is one direction, right? We have the recess light. It's only casting down. What happens if we have, say, a lamp or something where it's casting in all directions? We have to do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and create a brand new Rhino file with a different kind of light. And I'm asking you to do this two, or two to four times today, right? two to four different lights. Um, 
you are going to ultimately get an assignment. You won't get it today, you'll get it on Wednesday. Um, assignment 204 is to create an interior light and an exterior light. So today's the practice for that. But I don't want to give it to you yet because I don't want you to be thinking about what you're doing. I want you to practice the lighting uh, and learn from it today. So let me go to new large object inches. And so let's say this time we'll do, I don't know, we'll do a lamp. Uh, and I'll do something rather simple as a lamp. Let's do a cylinder on the ground. Yeah, I'll do a floor lamp. Why not? Uh, let's see, a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 1 inch. Let's switch into solid mode, or excuse me, shaded. Let's do another one there. Let's do a diameter of and a height of, I don't know, four feet. Okay, so I'm building the base. Right? Now I want to build the actual shade as part of this. So we'll go in here and we'll build a cylinder. And we'll say from there, um, and let's do, I don't know, 16 is a little big. Let's do 12 there. And let's do a height of 16. Okay, something like that. Again, very generic. Now, I don't want there to be a top and a bottom on this because there's typically not a top and a bottom on this. So let me go ahead and explode. And I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to get rid of this. Now, notice that I, I deliberately didn't extend this up too far into this space. Okay? It probably needs to go a little bit higher, or this shade needs to come down a little bit. So let me go move vertical by maybe negative 4 inches or so, something like that. Okay, so I have this in place. Now it's it's unlikely that I'm really going to see too much of a bulb inside of this because it's covered by a light shade. If I was looking down, you know, if I was going to do a rendering and I wanted to see it inside here, I might have to change uh, and and do an emissive bulb. But in this case, I really think I can get away with it without it. So let's go ahead and do a floor lamp. We'll get there. Don't worry. Floor lamp, and let's call this the base. And let's call this the shade. And I'm going to take these two, put them under the floor lamp. We'll take the base, and we'll change the base onto the base layer. We'll change the shade onto the shade layer, like that. Okay. Now we need to get rid of uh, layer 3 to 5, because we don't need it. Again, I'm trying to be very clean when I'm modeling this. So I have this. Again, it's on 0, 0.00. It's looking pretty good, but now I need to do the materials. So in this case, we'll go ahead and go into the materials library, and I'll go ahead and load some kind of a material for the base. So maybe, maybe some kind of a shiny material would be fun. So let's go into my resources, my V-Ray, materials, and everybody seems to want Chrome. So we're going to do Chrome. right? So there we go. Chrome it is. And let's change the object. Why can't I see it? Apply material to layer, base. All right. And there it is. So now comes the problem where I have to come up with whatever the material for this is going to be. And there's a couple different strategies for how to do the lampshade in its, in its best way. The simplest one is to create a basic material that has a little bit of transparency to it and has a little bit of the color that you want. Okay, So I'm going to do that one first, and then we'll get into some more complex stuff. So let me go ahead and right click, and I'm going to say Create Material. This is going to be a standard material. And we'll call this Lampshade. And I'll say OK. Part of the reason that I spend time earlier in the semester talking about where you change options for materials is because sometimes you need to kind of create something custom like this. Okay? So in this case, the color needs to be something that's kind of lampshade-esque. So maybe we'll pick kind of a light tannish color, something like that. Okay? And then the transparency, so if we were looking at it right now, looks like that. Okay? That kind of looks kind of like a lampshade. The transparency needs to be something. So maybe we'll do a medium gray and take a look. Eh, maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, it's not bad. So we'll try that. 
Okay, so I'll go ahead and apply material to layer. And we'll put it on the shade layer. Okay, say okay. And if we jump back, hold on. Okay, so here I am. We could look at it in the rendered view. And we get a little bit of a preview. Yeah, not too bad. So we'll go ahead and go to File, Save As. And we'll put this in. Yeah, because the sky is black right now. And so we'll go into exercise 222 here. And so this is now my floor lamp. And I'll go ahead and say save. OK, so let's go back to my sample night scene where I have these lights in. And let's take a look again at my layers. Okay, So I have a night scene. I have an infinite plane underneath. I have a layer called scene geometry. I should have paid a little bit more attention. Um, it looks like this can light layer is a holdover from when I was doing a previous one. Um, so we can really get rid of that. The floor lamp is also a holdover from one of the previous. I apologize. should have gotten rid of those. Uh, let me just get rid of those really fast. But that also means that you guys will probably see those layers. Really? There we go. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of these. Let's delete those. And let's delete these two layers. There we go. So I'm going to also make a layer. And I'll call this lighting, sure. or maybe more appropriately, V-Ray lights. And then I'm going to make a sublayer under here for spotlights, which will make it easy for me to come back and edit these spotlights. Okay, So let's change those. I could call those the can lights, uh, whatever's appropriate. Yeah. Then I will create another layer under the V-Ray lights for my lamp. We'll call this lamp lights, for lack of something better. Okay, So let's go ahead and bring in my um, floor lamp. So I'll go to Blocks, Block Manager. Oops, sorry. Blocks, Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I will browse for my floor lamp. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And again, I want to link it as a reference. So I'll say OK. And there it is. And we'll drop it into, into my scene there. Okay? So it comes in with my or excuse me, on my floor lamp layer. There's my materials exactly as I want it. So now in this context. You don't have a light bulb in there. Correct, I don't. So I'm I'm about to do it. So I didn't put an emissive material in here representing the light bulb because I don't think I'm gonna really see it because I'm gonna be looking at this through the lampshade. So I'm not gonna waste the emissive material. Instead, however, I do need to put a V-Ray light inside of this lamp. Okay? Now, the, if I were to do a spotlight, right, I could get a light that was shining up and a light that was shining down, but I wouldn't get anything coming out through the sides. So I need a different kind of light in V-Ray to mimic this sort of thing. And so that type of light is called a point light. And we'll see it right here, create point light. Okay? So if I click that, it lights in all directions from a point. And it looks like a little multi-sided star thing. So I'm going to look straight down on my object. And I'm going to drop it right on top of this little cylinder. Okay, That gets it into my scene, but I really need to move it up a little bit. So let me go to Move, Vertical, and let's move it up by maybe 4 inches. So we'll say 4 inches. And now it's floating there in the middle of my light. I'm going to make sure that this ends up on the, the lamp lights layer. So let me change object layer so that it's there. And remember, this will let me go back and select it. I will warn you that point lights are really difficult to click on and select when you have lots of geometry around them. They're, they're, they're finicky about how you pick them up. So if you have a layer, you can always right click and say select objects, and that's going to select them on the layer. So once again, we have to go back to properties. We have to go to light properties, and we have to edit these. The good news is spotlights and point lights are almost identical in their settings. When we get to things like rectangular lights, they're very difficult because it depends on the size of the light as to what the wattage should be. So it's much harder to script. Point lights and spotlights work essentially like a light bulb. So let's go ahead and change the color first. 255, 214, 170. And my intensity will go to 60. And we'll change my power to watts. 
and inverse square is already set, so we're looking pretty good. So now he's come back here, and I'm actually going to move the light and my geometry. I'm going to move these a little bit closer to the wall here. And I'm also going to turn off for right now, just so that you guys can see it a little bit better, my spotlights so that they're not there. I'll leave the lights in. We'll see the emissive. Uh, but I just want to concentrate on the floor lamp for a second. So now that I have all of that in place, I'll go ahead and click on the render button, and we'll see what happens. So that's essentially doing what I want it to do. Okay? So I have a, a light. You see that it's giving me an arc on the floor and an arc up on the ceiling. That's the light that's escaping through the top and the bottom of my cylinder. And I'm getting a brighter spot in the center that's fading out to the top and the bottom because that's naturally what would happen in that sort of a light shape. Okay? So it's working pretty well for what I want it to do. Okay? If I was unhappy, say, with the color of this, if I didn't want it to be yellow, I could go back. All right, let's go ahead and save this for now. And let me go back to my floor lamp. Let me come back to the material for the shade. And so I picked this kind of tannish color, but maybe I, I was really into, I don't know, pink. Right? I could pick a pink, maybe a lighter pink. Right? And now we can preview it. It's going to be pink. And I can save this. Right? And then we'll come back to my sample night scene. And we'll go to File, or excuse me, Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. It's going to tell me that the linked file is newer. We're going to update it. One block updated successfully. And it should have updated the color, too. So we'll take a render and see. And there we go. So part of the reason that I wanted to change this is because I wanted you to see that when I change the color of the shade, the light that's coming through the shade changes color. Right? So even though the light bulb itself is a standard incandescent color, slightly yellow, the fact that it's passing through this lampshade is tinting the color in the surrounding geometry. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So that material is affecting how the light looks. Okay? So this is very much about kind of how you blend the various pieces together. So now it's a matter of really working on you know, what do you want your geometry to look like, and how are you going to, to succeed at doing that. So you have a couple things to, to keep in mind. One is the emissive material and what that looks like. And the other is, you know, what does the light itself look like, and how is that working? So for example, you could do something like, let's say you really wanted neon or something. So let me go ahead and jump and create a new. Right. So, so let's go, let me create another Rhino. Uh, let's go back to the floor lamp, and let's go File, New, Large Object, Inches. Right, and let's say, and again, I'm doing this on the fly, right? So let's go to uh, text. We'll start there, and we'll do something like hi, and we probably need it to be in some kind of a nice script of some kind, right? Mm, I don't know my fonts on this this machine, so. Anybody know a good script font? I don't know. We'll just keep it simple, I guess. Arial it is. Oh, really tiny. Scale. All right. So let me, now that I, the, the whole point was I was going to trace over this. I could have just drawn high, right? Um, let me explode this so we get our, our little uh, layers there. Let me create a circle. No, you have to explode it to, to create this. Uh, diameter of, I don't know, a half inch. Whoops, my high is two gigantic letters here. Scale. Scale. Go from there to there. 
Oh, let's make that about six inches. Something like that. Eh, maybe that's too big. Scale. About two inches. There we go. Let me rotate 3D. And we're going to go there, there. And we'll fold it up like that. And let me also rotate this on, uh, oops, wrong way. Negative 45. How many times can you do the same thing, right? There we go. So then I'm going to sweep around this object, and I'll sweep around the other one. So let's copy this in a couple more places. Let's go there, to there, to there. Now, in reality, because it's neon, I probably should fill it the corners because neon is not sharp. But you guys get the idea, OK? Well, whatever. Let's do it accurately. Let radius, uh, I don't know. Let's do one inch. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to sweep one there. My cross section curve is right here. That's the direction, and we'll do it. Okay, well, it's close. I got a little fold over there, but it's fine. You guys get the idea. And so let's go to shaded, and there it is as my H. I don't know. I, this, this particular curve was, like, was flipped, so I need to flip that one back. I'd explode it and, and flip it. But I don't want to. I don't want you guys to have to watch me for too long. Okay, so let's let's just go with this as my little neon light, so you don't have to to, to do everything. Let me take this, and we're going to rotate 3D, and we'll fold that up, and we'll move it so that this is on point zero, comma zero, like that. Okay, so I have that. Now we need to create the emissive material for this. So let's call this one neon, and we'll call this bulb. Uh, we should call it something different, uh, red neon. And let's drop it under the neon, get rid of these. Again, very much about organization. Take these objects, put it on the red neon layer. There we go. Then we'll come in to my materials. We're going to create a material. It's going to be standard. And we'll call this red neon. Okay, so we had the settings that we did last time. Okay, remember this was in the 8.15 here. I'm going to follow all of those except for the emissive color. Okay, and actually, it's a good place to start. Might be following all of them, and then we'll we'll come back and edit them. Okay, so let me jump back. And so we're going to do 155 and zeros first. So this should be, oops, here. This should be 155s. The zeros are already set. I need to create a layer emissive. And we'll do the color first, which would be 200, 160, 200, 161, and 82. Okay, so this, the reason that I was setting up that is because I wanted to know the approximate value of this darkness. Okay? But I don't want it to be that color, so I'm going to shift the color over until I find a reddish color that I like, something like that. Okay? And maybe I'll bump this over just a little bit darker in red. Okay? So somewhere in that vein. And if I preview it, and not too special, but let's drop up the intensity maybe to 10. And we'll start to see that it's, it's shining out the way we want it to. Okay, So we'll go ahead and apply this red neon. Apply material to selection, or excuse me, to layer. Red neon. And we'll say OK. 
OK, well, I should probably bump it up. We'll go to 100 and see. I may have to edit this after the fact. I'm not sure. Uh, OK, so and if I were to preview it now, it's going to be really bright. It's still, if you look in the edges, there is some pink. OK, so we'll go ahead and say OK uh, for that. And let's save this as the red neon. So I'll go File, Save As. And I'll click Save. All right, so now we'll come back into my sample night scene. And we need a new light here. And we'll call this neon. Let's make that active. And then we're going to go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And let's drop this one in. So there it is. Now, obviously, I need it to, to be away from the wall slightly, because neon is typically away from the wall a little bit. So let's drop this there. And let's move it up. And let's move it over, something like that. OK, so let's turn off the floor lamp, because it's just going to conflict with it. And let's also turn off the floor lamp light. So now, if I were to render this, oh, all right, right, we'd get the tube that's being lit, but it's not really doing any lighting for the scene, right? It's glowing against the background, which obviously is representing the neon that I wanted it to, right? But it's not providing a whole lot of red light for the scene. So this is where we run into some trouble, okay? in terms of actually mimicking what really happens. Because a point light isn't really appropriate, because this isn't a point, right? And a spotlight isn't really appropriate. right? So we need some generic lighting that's, that's just coming from one side. Okay? So what we're going to do with this, and this one's a little bit trickier, so this is on the advanced side. So if you don't do this today, it's not a big deal. You'll end up doing this eventually, because you'll want to underlight stairs or something, and you'll end up doing these. So what I'm going to do is a different type of light that's called a rectangular light. Okay? And so a rectangular light is going to ask me for a corner. And so I'm going to draw this light in this front view. And I'm going to draw it slightly larger. So rectangular light length would be there. And there it is that way. Okay? And I drew it in the front view so I could see it. Now if I look at it really carefully, see how it has a little tiny arrow pointing in one direction? I have to make sure that that arrow is actually going the way I want it to go, okay? which in this case, it is going the way I want it to go. Now, the light cannot be coplanar or inside another object. So it has to be ever so slightly out from where it is. So let me go ahead and go to Move, right? and we'll drop it in, something like that. Okay? All right, so we have this set up. We have our rectangular light. It's lighting out for us. Okay, we'll take this rectangular light and we'll go into our properties and we're going to start to adjust the light properties here. So under color, right, before we did 255, 214, and 170. Oops. And again, I'm starting with that value, but then I'll swing the color spectrum more toward the pink side. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to get approximately the same value. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. Now I'll go back into watts and then under intensity, Right? This is a little tricky, because rectangular lights don't work like light bulbs. It depends on how large the rectangle is. So it's really a guess the first time. I'm going to say 10 to start. Okay? Then I'll make sure that I go through the rest of the options. So again, it's in watts. Notice that I don't have the inverse uh, square fall off. Here, I have a few things. One, I want to check the box for invisible, because I don't want to see the light itself. I just want the light to be cast. And I can choose whether I want it to go in one direction or both directions. So in this case, I think I want it to just go in one direction. Okay? The rest of these are fine. We'll go ahead and say OK. And then we basically have to do a render and see. I don't think it's going to affect it, but we'll see. Right? Let's pull this up and take a look. All right, so we're getting decent glow off of it. I don't think it's quite enough quite yet. 
So I'm going to come back, take my rectangle, and I'm going to up the power. We'll try 60, and then we'll render. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. So it happens that it's also 60, but that rarely happens that it coincides. Okay, so now, instead of relying just on, and I know it's hard for you guys to see on the projector because it just doesn't look, doesn't look quite right. Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit more of the pink on the ground, uh, which, is, which is providing that, that extra illumination from the neon light. Okay, so let me go back one more time here. Maybe I'll drop this up to maybe 100 and see if you guys can see it a little bit better in the rendering. Yeah, I don't know whether you can see it, but this, this light that's, that's being cast on the ground definitely has a pinkish tint to it. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't happy with this pinkish tint, I could adjust the color a little bit, but it actually, on my screen, better than your screen up here, uh, it looks pretty accurate to what I'm after in terms of the neon with the light. So certainly the rectangular light is beyond the scope of what you need to do today, but I wanted to kind of run the spectrum and show you what you can do in the various lights. Recognize also that I've been doing this a lot longer than you guys have in terms of the light, so I can make these look really easy to, to work. Um, and you'll struggle with the settings and struggle to make sure it works, and you're going to have some burned out bulbs, and it's just the way of the, the world. But you guys need to start practicing this, and in this kind of a context, a very controlled environment, you can get away with trying a, a bunch of things and seeing if they work or th if they don't work. Okay? Next class, we're going to take what we learned today with the lighting and actually put it into your, um, your, your assignment, your final assignment 205's building and see what happens. Okay? So ideally, pick lights that you'd like to put into your design. You will ultimately be responsible as part of assignment 204 in to create lights for your building. So this is kind of the precursor to that, and then you'll obviously spend some more time really getting the materials and everything to look right. Okay? Today is very much about learning the process and understanding how these various lights work and, and what, they'll, what they'll show up as. Okay? Are there any questions? I know it was a lot to take in today. Right? That's the nature of lighting. But I have to get you started somewhere. All right?